the brother priests and my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. I was only a young boy even before I received my first communion when I became aware of the prayer for a happy death because my grandmother died. It heightened with devotion to St. Joseph. I learned later on that St. Joseph was the patron of a happy death because when he died, Jesus was beside him. As a young boy and as a teenager, I understood that happy death was dying with your loved ones around you, dying after the priest has blessed you, and dying without tubes, without needles, breathing slowly, 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 until you breathe no more. That was how I understood a happy death. Until I heard of a priest who died in an accident. Until I saw people being killed by guns. Until I saw children killed in war by bombs. Until I heard of the first suicide. Until I heard of parents dying with their children angry at them. Until I heard of Lolo and Lola dying alone. And now recently, after dying from COVID-19, Archbishop Oscar was cremated right away. We were not even given a chance to see his mortal remains. And then I asked myself, is this happy death? For many of us, we have experienced frustration, guilt, sadness, repentance, sorrow, a sense of incompletion, a sense of doubt whether we have really reconciled or whether we took care of the dead or they could have lived longer if we, if we gave them greater care. My dear brothers and sisters, such is the reality that many have died and those left behind are asking, where did they go wrong? Or even years after they have died, we are still trying to reconcile with the reality that they died without hearing our apology, they died without giving us their forgiveness, they died without asking for reconciliation, they died and gave us problems. And then you ask questions like, happy death? Even with us in the church, priests and bishops dying with mission incomplete or dying with ugly feelings about them when they were alive, dying with unhappy memories, with gossips that still sound so fresh. I was ministering to one seminarian only a few months before ordination and we discerned together that one of his deepest problems before entering the priesthood was when he was seven years old and his mother was dying from cancer and he was so afraid to look at his mother his mother asked him can you hug me for the last time and he hid behind the door and the mother died without experiencing a hug from him. And 30 years later, he was still being tormented by the memory that he did not hug his mother and his mother cannot be hugged anymore. And therefore, his life was incomplete and he was still grieving and feeling guilty. The story is not unique. We have seen death and we still have feelings of guilt, remorse, sorrow with the faithful departed and we seem unable to reconcile with them. Does death really close the possibility of reconciliation? Does death really close the possibility of receiving forgiveness and asking forgiveness. 
Does death really close the possibility of not being able to communicate with them anymore? And the answer, my dear brothers and sisters, is a big no. Yes, beyond death, we can still communicate with the dead. Yes, beyond death, we can still communicate with the dead whom we have hurt, with the dead who have hurt us, with the dead for whom we have ugly memories, with the dead for whom we have ugly feelings of anger, of resentment, of being ignored, of being taken for granted. We can still communicate with them. And that is the meaning of today's gathering. The communion of saints tells us that we are still in communion with those who have died because death does not end time for them. Their death did not end time for us because the death is not death for them because there is life. We do not die because we believe in Christ. Therefore, we can still communicate. And it is not just the communication that psychoanalysts recommend us to have. It is not just the recommendation under hypnosis. It is communication in faith. It is communication with love. It is communication because that is the real reason of communion of saints. It makes us possible to reconcile, to talk, to close issues with them, and to heal. Because truth be told, my dear brothers and sisters, death can be cleansing. Death can be an opportunity for purification. As the gospel reminded us, when the Lord told the good thief, Today, you will be with me in paradise. By his death, he received cleansing from all his sins. And by his death, he was able to communicate with his fellow thieves, with his fellow criminals, to be able to challenge them to start anew. So today, my dear brother priest especially, if you carry in your heart guilt, ugly feelings, ugly memories, if you carry in your heart the sadness that you were not able to reconcile and he or she is no longer with us, we can communicate with them today, not as ghosts, but as brothers and sisters who share the same faith who believed in life everlasting, who believed that time does not end with death. And then we can communicate with them. Let us continue the healing that we were not able to do. Let us close the ugly memories we were not able to close. We can receive forgiveness from them. They can receive forgiveness from us. We can hug each other in spirit, we can hug each other in faith and allow all the unreconciled feelings to find its closure in the Lord. We pray for our brother priests. Some of them have died without reconciliation with us who have been left behind. We pray even for our bishops who might have hurt us, who might have wounded us, who might have ignored us and taken us for granted, misjudged us or suspected us. Time is not lost. We can still reconcile. And where they are, they understand better. Where they are, they can forgive more easily. Where they are, they can receive our mercy more easily. It is time to reconcile. It is time to heal. It is time to believe that death does not end time. Death does not end life. That beyond death, 
there is time. Beyond death, there is life. And beyond death, they can still forgive us and we can still be forgiven by them. May the souls of our departed bishops, priests, and religious, through the mercy of God, rest in peace.